Hi everyone, it's Miss Chima here again. Today we're going to be looking at multiplying and dividing by tens, hundreds, and thousands. Now, what we've got to remember are two things when we times and divide by tens, hundreds, and thousands. Whenever we times by a number, we know that the number will always get bigger. However, when we divide by a whole number, the number always becomes smaller. So, we've got to think about that and we've got to remember that whenever we use this strategy to multiply or divide by tens, hundreds and thousands. Now, to start off with, if we take any number, so I'm going to start off with 23. Now we know that in 23, these are our ones and these are our tens. And it really helps to actually write out your place value like I've done here. We also know that this is a whole number because there are no tenths or hundredths. There's no decimal point here. But we know that there's always a decimal point hiding just to the right of our ones, just there. And if I put that decimal place just here as well, and we can work out what this would be if we were to times it by 10. Now, when we're timesing by 10, we move our digits to the left. When we divide by 10, or divide by a hundred or a thousand, we move our digits to the right, and I'll show you how. So, if we needed to divide, t sorry, if we needed to times 23 by 10, we would move our digits to the left. Now, to find out how many places, we look at how many zeros there are. And because there's only one zero, we're only going to move our digits once. So, I'm going to move my two here into the hundreds column. I'm going to move my three. I'm going to take one leap and it comes here. Now my decimal place is still over here just to the right of my ones but I see an empty gap in the ones column. We don't have any empty gaps because that's a place that needs to be filled in the ones. Because that's a place that needs to be filled we put our placeholder in which is our zero. So We've just worked out what 23 would be if we were to times it by 10. That's 230. Now, if we were to use that same strategy again, but this time, so I'm just going to write times 10 here, just to remind us what we did. However, if this time we want to divide 23 by 10, what we do is I'm going to write it out again for me just here there's 23 my ones and my tens but i'm going to put my decimal place in again to the right remember your decimal place is always to the right of your ones and this time it says here that we need to take and move our digits one place to the right and it's one place because there's only one zero in ten so let's do this I'm going to move it one place. I'm going to start with my threes again. There it goes, one place, and it's got to go here. I'm going to move my two one place as well. And that goes here. And what I notice is if I put my decimal place back in, my three has now moved out of the ones into the tenths, which we can write here. So my number is now no longer a whole number, it's become 2.3. So, to divide by 10, I would move my digits to the right one place, and I've seen that it, my number becomes smaller than what I started with. But when I was timesing by 10, my number became larger. Which is exactly what we said at the beginning, didn't we? Now let's try that same strategy 
but we're going to be timesing and dividing by a hundred. So let's have a look. If I write another number here, we're going to go for 400. It's not writing. 463. I'm going to do a three digit number this time. And again, just like we did before, I'm going to write out my place value, my zeros, my tens, and my hundreds. However, because I'm timesing by a hundred this time, following the same rule, I'm going to move my digits to the left, but this time, looking at how many zeros I've got, I've got two zeros. So I'm going to move my digits two places to the left. But before I forget, I'm just going to put my decimal place in because I need to remind myself where it goes. Now remember, because it's a whole number, your decimal place tends to be invisible, but I'm going to keep it visible just so that you can see what happens to our digits a little later on when we divide the same number by 100. But let's carry on with timesing by 100 now. So 463, and we're going to make it leap two times to the left. We're going to start with our ones. One, two, that goes here. Six, one, two, comes here. And four, we're going to go one, two, that's four. And if I put in our rest of the place value, so that's ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and a hundred thousands. And again, you can see we've got some empty spaces in the tens and ones columns. And just like we did earlier, we're going to fill them up with our zeros as placeholders. Now, what do we notice? Again, our number has become larger than our number that we started with, which again tells us that when we times by a number, it becomes larger than what we started with. So that was timesing by 100. This time I'm going to show you dividing by 100, but I'm going to use the same number just to show you what happens when we divide by 100. So 463 was our original number. I'm going to write my place value out again. I'm going to put my decimal place in as well. And because we're dividing by 100, we're going to move to the right and we're going to move two places to the right. So here we go. We're going to start off with our ones again. I'm going to go one, two, there's my three. I'm going to go one, two, there's my six. And I'm going to go one, two, and there's my four. But it, I won't forget my decimal point. And once again, our number is no longer a whole number it's 4.63 because now we've gone into our tenths and our hundredths column two. So whenever we times a number by tens, hundreds or thousands, we see that our number gets bigger. It also moves all of our digits to the left depending on how many zeros we have in that number. When we divide by tens, hundreds and thousands, we see that our number moves to the right, but similarly to timesing, we still move to the right however many places, depending on how many zeros we might have. So it's either two for a hundred, one for ten, or three for a thousand. Now, I'm going to leave it there, but I'm going to set you all a challenge. Together, we've looked at timesing and dividing by tens and hundreds, but we've still got a thousand left. Now, I will give you a clue though. It's the exact same strategy, but we just need to look at how many zeros there are in a thousand. So, with that in mind, I'd like you all to have a go at working out these questions for me at home oops at home so start to think about what happens 
if you were to times and divide these numbers by tens, hundreds and thousands. And I'm going to be a little bit sneaky and I'm going to put a decimal number in there as well. And I want you to find out what happens when you start with a decimal number. I seem to like my threes a lot as well. <laughs> so these are your five questions that I'd like you to work out. And once you've worked them out, send them through to us and we'll have a look at them. Send them via email and we'll have a look and see how fantastic your learning is. Now remember, for each of these questions, I'd like you to times and divide by tens, hundreds and thousands. I hope that that's been a very informative video and I hope that you've learned something that you didn't already know or I hope I've refreshed your memory on some fantastic facts. Please stay safe. I hope to see you all soon. Bye for now.